Hi, this is Manos Berlakis and this is video 16.1 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a video discussing how to approach proximal cap ambiguity. Proximal cap ambiguity is inability to determine where is the origin of the CTO. This can be a very important parameter because we do not want to advance guide wires in the wrong location as this can lead to perforation. For example, here the occlusion could be arising at this point or at this point. It's hard to know exactly where it is. This is something fairly common. About one in three CTOs has proximal cap ambiguity. And uh, those CTOs are more likely to require higher contrast volume, higher radiation, fluoroscopy time, and uh, they are more likely to require use of more advanced uh, uh, crossing strategies such as ADR and the retrograde approach. And there's also a penalty in terms of success about 10 points less than in CTOs without ambiguous proximal cap. So what can we do for lesions that have an ambiguous proximal cap? And I've broken this down to six potential solutions. Better in geography, CT in geography, IVUS, the open sesame technique, move the cap techniques and the retrograde approach. Starting with the angiogram, the ambiguity of the proximal cap depends on a large extent on the interpretation of the angiogram and more experienced operators may be able to decipher with higher accuracy where is the location of the proximal cap. This is an example of an LAD CTO that uh, continues into the diagonal branch. It is unclear exactly where the occlusion starts. This is the right coronary artery. Again, we don't really see much feeling of the LAD. However, once we take a picture with the catheter less deeply engaged, now we see this uh, view sense collateral that comes from the proximal RCA and actually fills the LAD. And we'll do this dual injection. Now it becomes much more clear that the CTO is actually a fairly short CTO. And doing orthogonal projection helps further clarify the location of the proximal cap. In this case, it was still difficult to advance a wire to that area, but uh, having the contralateral visualization, we did uh, the scratch and go technique, created an extra plug dissection, and advanced the guide wire along the course of the mid LED, followed by confirmation in an orthogonal view, and then a successful re-entry with the Stingray system and a nice final result. So taking the time to do a good angiogram can really help clarify the ambiguity of the proximal cap. The second technique is to do a coronary CT angiogram. And that's something we are increasingly doing, especially in complex cases or cases that have failed before. This is an example of a patient who on the angiogram has an osteal LAD CTO. It is unclear if the CTO is on point A, point B, or point C. However, <clears throat> Once the CT is done, it is now clear that the CTO starts at the point A. This is an example of uh, a patient who had a diagnostic angiogram before and has a CTO circumflex of the circumflex. And in cases like this, we can also do what's called CT co-registration on the Zeeman system, in which we can have uh, an overlay of the CT findings with the current angiogram and use this as a guide to advance our guide wire, and this allowed us to cross the occlusion. A third solution for ambiguity is to do intravascular ultrasound. This uh, requires the presence of a side branch close to the proximal cap. The IVUS catheter is advanced into the side branch, and then we can see under IVUS, as long as there is not significant calcification, what is the origin of the other vessel. So there is, for example, a patient who has a diagonal CTO, but there is no stump to denote where the CTO starts. In this case, IVUS was done into the LAD. We're doing a pullback, and as we're coming back, we're seeing that uh, the vessel is coming back and here is the location of the diagonal branch. So by doing the IVUS, we can locate the location, but also when we try to advance the guide wire there, we can use IVUS to confirm that the guide wire is indeed going where it's supposed to go. <coughs> so in this particular case, we do have uh, the IVO showing to us that the guide wire is indeed inside that side branch, which is a diagonal in our case. 
The fourth technique is called the open sesame technique. And uh, this is an easy technique. It also requires that there is a side branch close to the proximal cap. What we have here is a circumflex CTO. It's an osteal circumflex CTO. There is some disease there. Potentially, this could be the origin, but it's hard to know exactly where the CTO originates. So what we did is took a balloon and inflated it between the left main and uh, uh, the LAD. And after doing that, there was actually some flow going into the circumflex. So open sesame is inflating a balloon between the... Uh, proximal vessel and the side branch and then that helps potentially open a channel along the course of the CTO vessel. This can also be done for heavily calcified lesions using intravascular lithotripsy. The fifth technique is the so-called move the cap techniques and these are techniques that use the extra placa space for crossing through the CTO. There are two such techniques that are discussed in detail in video 8.2.7. The first one is scratch and go in which we advanced a stiff wire into the wall of the vessel followed by a polymer jacketed wire. And the other one is the base technique or balloon assisted subintimal entry in which a balloon is inflated in the proximal vessel that causes dissections in the wall. And then a polymer jacketed guide wire is inserted into the extra plug space. This is again in more detail in the scratch and go. We advance the stiff wire first, partially in the wall, take it back, and then uh, advance the polymer jacketed wire. And then uh, we use a slightly oversized balloon in the base technique to cause the dissections in the proximal vessel, and then a polymer jacketed wire to go into the extra plug space. There's also the side base technique when a guide wire keeps on entering into a side branch that can be used to prevent the guide wire from getting to the side branch and the guide wire as a result continues along the course of the vessel. This is an example of a scratch and go technique. This is a right coronary artery CTO, multiple branches originating in the proximal cap making difficult to understand where the lesion starts. Multiple projections did not help. Still, a lot of branches, hard to know where the CTO starts. So in this case, we used a Confianza Pro 12 wire, injured the proximal vessel, and caused the dissection. Now that we have a dissection, we were able to advance the knuckle through the dissection area, and now this is going along the course of the right coronary artery, followed by re-entry, and then uh, successful standing. Very important when we use the move the cup techniques is that we need to be able to re-enter. So having experience with the Stingray system, with dual lumen microcatheters is important because going extra plaque is the first step and it requires getting back into the distal true lumen. And last but not least, Number six for approaching an ambiguous proximal cap is to use the retrograde approach. This can be done either by advancing a retrograde wire that serves as marker for undergrade crossing or by trying to cross the lesion retrogradely. This is an example of a patient who has a proximal RCA CTO. This is not really ambiguous, but it was uh, fairly blunt. And in that case, a retrograde wire was inserted that uh, explains exactly where the location of the vessel is and that helped advance an undergrade guide wire alongside with the retrograde guide wire and then do the reverse card. So to summarize, in a patient that has an ambiguous proximal cap, the first step is to do a better angiogram in different projections to see if we can clarify the ambiguity. The second step, which has to happen before the case, is to do a coronary CT angiogram. The third one is using IVUS, which requires a side branch close to the proximal cap. The fourth is to use the open sesame technique, balloon inflation into a side branch. The fifth one is to go extra plaque, the so-called move the cap techniques. And the sixth one is to use the retrograde approach. Thank you.